Welcome back to Evermore YouTube channel. It's Chris back with another rumour has it video where this might be something that's actually turning into something rather than just speculation or journalistic stories about a certain player. We're talking about a key position Newcastle have been trying to fill all summer, apparently, and it's the centre-half position. And this looks like a player who will add real quality to the squad if these stories are to be Believe. So before I get stuck into that, a little reminder as always, say if you like what you're watching, smash subscribe, come help us get to 9k. We're almost there. I think we've got 700 to get there or something like that. So if you're feeling generous, smash that button and help us get there, guys. But let's get stuck into what I'm talking about. So you've all seen the news breaking online. I think got to credit David Ornstein of The Athletic, who seems to really have his finger on the pulse for transfers. He really, really does. Everyone seems to take a beat off what he talks about. Uh, so he must have so many good connections and contacts in this. So fair play to you, Ornstein for this one. But it looks like Newcastle United have made contact with Crystal Palace over the signing of Mark Gai, the centre-half who's been over in the Euros playing for England. I'm playing really well, to be honest with you. Um, we've looked at this play before. Me and Mark have done a room has it before. He's been ran through the super-duper computer. He is a quality player. There's no doubt about it at all. He's right-footed. Perfect. He's 24 years of age. Perfect. He's quick. He's got good positional sense. He's strong. He's good in the air. He can use the ball well. And he looked really like he wasn't out of place at all in the European Championships, you know, alongside John Stones, who's a fantastic centre half. So I think that little taste of the Euros has only just helped improve Mark Guy. He is a player as well, to be honest with you. So it looks very much like Newcastle are the first club to move. Now, I'm not getting too excited about this one yet because, you know, it's been caveated out there. So there's a lot of clubs who are in for Guy, and why not? I think they were in from before he went to the Euros, but going to the Euros has only further enhanced his reputation, not just in the Premier League, probably around Europe as well. But people have looked at this guy and thought, hey, do you know what? He's a good player. And um, so there will be a lot of teams that are in from. But I think the fact that we've made him move early sounds to me like we could really be making a serious play for this lad. Now, the only issue that we have with this, I think, you know, we've looked at the transfer market so far and it's not been great. Those horrible words, PSR and FFP, just haunt you like fucking ghosts in a mansion you can't get rid of. Someone call the Ghostbusters and get rid of these fucking things. They're driving me up the wall. It's pissing me right off. More on that in a second. But going back to the player himself, it sounds like Crystal Palace are looking for around about 60 to 65 million quid. So if you look at what Everton have done with Jared Branthwaite, the scare of Manchester United, much to Goldbridge and the rest of the Man United fans' displeasure, um, they valued him at over 60 million quid. So that's really made Man U scurry off. And they went and signed other centre-halves and, and they're injured now. So unlucky in pre-season. I'm not going to mock them. They would mock us, but I'm bigger than that. So fuck them. So going back to Mark Guy himself. So 60 to 65 million quid. Now, you're talking about Newcastle United, who are owned by some of the richest people on the planet, but that doesn't seem to matter one iota when it comes to spending money in the Premier League. We are handcuffed, hamstrung. If you look at the player that we're reportedly going to sign, you know, uh, William Osala from Sheffield United for 10 million quid, rising to 15, hasn't got a single goal in 21 appearances. I'm going to get into that in a second uh, because I did have a video all lined up to talk about that earlier on, and I pulled it just because of all the hysteria and just utter shite really from some of these um, hyperbolic fans that no matter what you say, just want to shut you down. I couldn't be arsed with the abuse. I've had a real hectic couple of weeks, guys, and I couldn't be done with it. But I'll get into that in a second. But going back to Mark Gahey, I think 60 million quid, 65 million quid is money well spent in terms of the going rate for a centre for sorry, a centre half, a bigger pardon. If you compare him to 15 million quid for a kid who hasn't hit a barn door in 21 games, then 65 million quid for a, you know, a good centre-half in the Premier League who's just shone at the Euros is probably value for money, I would say, in the current footballing world. But let us know in the comments below what you think about Mark Guy here. I'm not going to get too excited about it until we see it moving on a little bit further. All these videos are doing the rounds when they've asked him what was his favourite ground to play at other than Sellers Park, of course, so he doesn't get any shit off the Palace fans that he said St James. So everyone's using that now as obviously fuel to the fire. But he's an excellent player. I think he's the right age. I think he could really be a long-term partner for Sven Botman moving forward. And people have already talked about that potential back four with Tino Livramento, Mark Gahey, Sven Botman and Lewis Hall. And that's no disrespect to the likes of Fabian Scher, Dan Byrne, Kieran Trippier. But we know that back four's age and it was excellent two seasons ago. It looked 
ropey and leggy last season at times. It really did. No matter what people want to admit or not, Kieran Trippier had looked like his legs were going. You know, the only one out of the whole back four that was brilliant uh, when we got to Champions League, you know, including Matt Targa, who's just disappeared off the radar, was Fabian Cher, who's still a brilliant player. If Mark Guy comes in, I can't see Cher just being dropped automatically. But you don't know. Maybe the club are looking to move Cher on, you know, for, for the PSR balancing act. I don't know. You know, I would rather move uh, Jamal Asselz on personally, but he's knackered, so nobody's going to buy him. So that is an exciting signing. Let's hope that happens. Now, a little bit more on William Osala. Now, I understand the argument that people have saying, you know, it's a young striker, he's going to be third fiddle to Isaac and Wilson. Now, I'm underwhelmed by this signing. I won't get into it in too much detail because I just can't be asked for the shit in the comments. You know, the, football is a game of opinions, always has been and always will be. But what seems to be the case now is if somebody has a difference of opinion or, or, or is viewed as a slight critique or a slight disappointment in anything that the club does, uh, they just get jumped on, vilified, attacked and abused. And I think it's absolute horseshit. You know, people telling you to go and support another club. No, I won't go and support another club. Fuck you, mate. You're not telling me who to support. I'm allowed to have a difference of opinion, and so is everybody else. If you think this kid's the second coming, which a lot of people have done, they've had to dig deep to find a goal for the fucking lad. I think he's got one goal in the reserves. That seems to be played on loop time and time again. But listen, he might be a good player. He's only, what, 20, 21 years old or something. He may come on to a game. I appreciate that you're not the finished article at 20 or 21, but his goal return doesn't look good. His stats don't look good. I know he was playing for Sheffield United, you know, so... People look shit playing for shit teams, but, you know, Brennan Diaz didn't look too shit playing for Sheffield United. He's just got to move to Southampton. He scored goals. So, you know, you got to look at that in terms of ability. But this kid looks like he's coming in, quite frankly, because Callum Wilson is injured again and no fucker wants to buy him. So I've had to go and buy this young lad from Sheffield United for 10 million quid, which looks like a bargain in terms of the general transfer window. But I think you could have went and got a striker who's actually got a bit of a goal return for 10 or 15 million quid. But as everybody says, trust the process. You've got to trust Mitchell. You've got to trust Howe. You've got to trust the board. And if it goes wrong, then they'll stand up there and get custard pies chucked in the face. And if it goes right, they'll stand up there and stick their chest out and be dead chuffed. And all of the trust the process fans will take great pleasure in ramming it down the throat of anybody who is cynical about or, 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 or maybe dismissive or you know, doubtful about that sign. And they'll all get it thrown back in their faces by these people because they love to crow when they think that they're right. But that's my thoughts about the two transfers or one transfer. Looks like it's definitely happening in terms of Asala. The guy you want is just starting to build momentum. Let's hope Newcastle can get that one over the line because I think that would be an exciting signing. Get everybody off their chairs, everybody a bit more excited for the season ahead. We do need a right winger. You know, that's the, the key signing I think we need as well in terms of that attack and threat. A right centre half, great. A right winger, great. A centre forward, if it is a Asala, fair enough. We'll support the lad. Let's hope he turns out to be something better than his stats are showing. But we need three positions filled. The club need to pull their finger out their arse. Premier League's round the corner. Let's hope they do it. Let us know what you think in the comments below, guys. We always like to hear from you. If you take the time to put a comment in, we'll take the time to reply. But keep it above the belt, guys. As I've just said before, there's no need for toxicity when someone has a difference of opinion on football. That's what football's all about. So as I've said before, and I'll say again, don't be a prick or you'll get the flick. Let's just talk about football and keep it in a nice, calm environment. Have a belter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.